This bait is amazing, isn't it? Got him, folks. Got him. Got him. Reloaded. Fishing with Joe Booker Reloaded is brought to you by these fine sponsors. So this episode is kind of interesting, you know. This was right during that time in the 90s when I was really promoting fishing and developing the Slopmaster series of lures and I was really learning, I was taking all my bass skills and really applying the muskies in, in, a, in a way that maybe nobody's ever applied before, you know. Most muskie anglers fish with treble hooks. Most muskie anglers fish thick when they get into a thick weed situation they fish edges because they can't get into it or they start fishing open water and they start fishing clean bottom spots you know like rock humps and, and mid lake bars and stuff like that but this time of my career i kind of exposed that there's another group of muskies that push us up inside this stuff especially when conditions aren't that good and you can get at those fish, but you got to use specialized lures and single hooks is the way to go. So started to develop this whole Slopmaster series, which eventually, of course, became a Slopmaster spinnerbait uh, in several different families and sizes. And then, you know, Slopmaster buzzbait and a Slopmaster spoon. And we may do more things like a Slopmaster jig or something down, you know, in the future. But uh, you, what you need to know about this episode that really wasn't discussed and I, I break down some, some pretty cool things inside this episode, including look how far inside the slop this muskie was. You know, check this out as you see me making casts. I'm way up inside this stuff. We're in the middle of July and August. The guys just aren't fishing in there. And so, especially, you know, during that time, nobody was doing that. And now really there's another group of anglers that have just ignore that kind of fishing. They're fishing deeper, but they're not getting up inside of stuff. The bass anglers know how to do this. <clears throat> The musky anglers don't, as still even to this day. So it takes specialized weapons. But one last tip that's not really discussed here, so I'm gonna point it out as you watch this video, now you'll now you'll really see it from, from a fisherman's standpoint that most people miss this, okay? When I'm fishing the slop, when I'm fishing emergent weeds, I fish backwards. In other words, I fish against the grain. Why? Because the weeds fold over. So. So I'm not fishing, I'm not staying, if the weeds are folded over like this and the wind is coming in from this side. I'm not fishing up here, I'm fishing down here because it's easier to cast over the weeds and have your bait go through the folded over weeds. So it's one of those tricks. You'll see also I'm fishing on the leeward side of the structure, of this entire uh, structure that's a saddle of weeds that's connected to islands and bars and stuff. It's, a, it's quite a structure, but you know, I'm fishing backwards I'm fishing into the weeds I'm fishing you know into the slop with the with the weeds folded towards me and watch this as you see it unfold you can see the bait just kind of it just goes right through because of the way I'm fishing it and I suggest you do the same whenever you can even when you're fishing on the upwind side of spots try getting on the far inside of it in other words you're you're in very shallow water and you're casting out and over that weed slop that's folded over very few musk anglers would even think of trying this, but check this out, it works. Hey folks, welcome to our musky segment. We're gonna fish slop today. It's late July. The month of July and the month of August from 4th of July to Labor Day is slop time in a lot of our lakes. What I mean by slop is heavy cabbage weeds. If you look out in front of me, you can see a patch of that stuff right in front of me. This is the kind of stuff we're gonna be fishing today. And when the water gets at its peak temperatures from the 4th of July to Labor Day, a lot of these, these especially these Canadian environments, but Wisconsin environments is very much the same. If you have good weed growth, when the weed growth peaks, remember this too, when the weed growth hits the surface, like it is out here, when you see tassels of cabbage, or milfoil that's just under the surface. A lot of times the milfoil, by the way, in Wisconsin, it's a late August, early September thing. But when you get that peak weed growth, it's slop time. Now, when you fish in slop, treble hooks don't cut it. 
okay? That's when you have to go with single hook spinner baits. Like this right here. That's why I designed the Slop Master spinner bait. And I'm just going to tune this baby up here a little bit. This is an original here. And what I've got here is black with an orange blade. I'm going to dress this with a, a five inch uh, Pro Finesse grub here. Just to make it a little bit, just a little bit bigger bait and just have that little teaser in the back end. And all I do to, to dress that is just to take that grub, thread it through the top there with the hook, come out at the base, the meat of the grub, always on the seam, tail up. See how the curly tail is up? Then we'll push it up on the stem of the, uh, the hook there and the shaft of the hook. And when it's done, you'll hit, you even, you, even if you have a little curl in the end there, that's good. Okay, then we're ready to go. Now, the simplicity of this, of this lure in this presentation is key because what you want is something that'll go through all of these weeds. So if you've got a treble hook lure, it's going to catch the weeds. You've got to have a single hook lure. What's the difference between this spinner bait and some of the other conventional spinner baits? The biggest difference is the flat head, when it comes up over emergent cover, it won't flip over. And that's what's tangling a lot of these spinner baits in garbage. This will walk on the surface with the hook riding upright almost like a spoon would, almost like a, like a weedless spoon would, okay? And the other thing is this wire shaft is pretty straight, you see, off, off the lead head, which stops the collection of cabbage and grass around the lead head, between the lead head and the wire. The combination makes it really fish through cover good. All right, with that, let's go get one. Enough talk, more fishing. Oh, one last thing, heavy braided wire, uh, braided line, I'm fishing with 80 pound test here, super braid. You can see I've got one of St. Croix's, uh, new Avid series baitcast reels. The 300 series is real good for this. I'm fishing with a seven foot medium heavy power St. Croix Avid rod. Also, one last thing I didn't, didn't mention, no wire leaders. Put a wire leader in front of this, messes the whole bait up, has a tendency to, to mess up the balance of the bait and wrap. So you keep, keep the wire leader off. The wire leader on this bait is the wire shaft of the spinner bait itself. All right, again, enough talk, let's go fish. This bait is amazing, isn't it? Got him, folks. Got him. Got him. Got him. Put a lot of pressure on him, folks. Put a lot of pressure on that fish. probably just heard me saying this bait is amazing isn't it I mean the bait goes through everything <laughs> you just saw a, uh, a textbook example of the slop master in action now earlier I missed one and I missed the fish with the trailer hook I don't have a good answer for that other than the fish just didn't hit it right one of the things you're gonna find out when you're fishing single hook spinner baits is that Yes, you're going to miss a, miss a percentage of fish. But if you see where this muskie just came from, you don't have a chance at those fish with a treble hook lure. So it's a chance you have to take. You put a trailer hook on the bait, and the trailer hook catches a lot more garbage because it doesn't lay straight on the bait. And it has a tendency to fall over. That's why the slot master is best fish most of the time without a trailer hook. One single hook, one good single hook, all you need to catch these fish, and as you can see, when they hit it good, you catch them. All right, let's see what he looks like. Oh, what a beautiful fish, too. What a beauty. Love catching fish on those spinner baits. Of course, you know, I introduced this bait last year, and uh, 
you know, unofficially was one of the hottest, hottest musky lures on, in, you know, retail level. And of course, you can see why. This baby catches the uncatchable fish. You know, when guys design stuff that's special, whether it's a rubber bait for deep water fishing or something as specialized as this, oh, he's hooked really good. That hook is just driven right through there. Okay, buddy. Okay, you're free. That's one of the good things about single hook lures, too, is boy, they're easy to get out of the net. Okay. We're just about free here. We just got a little landing net over the wire arm and the spinner bait. And here we go. What do you think, huh? <laughs> That's slop master action at its best. Get in a slop, single hooks, no trailer hooks. And yes, you may miss a few fish, but those are fish you wouldn't catch otherwise. We'll see you next week. What a nice fish, huh? Whew. Okay, let's put you back. Back over the side with you. Really healthy fish, isn't it? Yeah.